Receive fake phone day. So interesting, I'm telling you. Vicious corals, aquapora, all about aquariums. Teaching how to care for them. Where the reef of fish only. Make sure that you subscribe. The channel got what you want. And let's go. Receive fake phone day. Receive fake phone day. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I've been uh, getting questions uh, recently about what values of uh, alkalinity and pH I keep in my reef tank. And when I get into a bit of details, I notice that uh, a lot of reefers do not really understand the concept of alkalinity and how it is related to the pH uh, in our tanks. Uh, so I thought I should uh, make an in-depth video to explain what I ha understand about uh, these concepts. So by the end of this video, you should be having a better understanding of these two concepts and the relationship between them and not just chase numbers given by some other reefer. I just want to inform you that this video is going to be a bit theoretical and I'm sorry about it, uh, but this uh, is necessary to understand the future videos that I'm going to make, which is uh, going to be more practical uh, uh, side of things uh, on how these concepts can uh, uh, be applied on the reef tanks. If you're more interested into the practical side of things, I'll link uh, to the next video uh, that I haven't yet uh, published uh, in the description. So please do check it out. For this video, I'll try to uh, simplify most of the concepts and not go into detailed uh, chemistry and uh, mathematics involved so that most of uh, the non-scientific uh, reefers can uh, follow along. The first concept I want to touch upon is uh, the concept of acids and bases or alkaline. Uh, so this uh, is uh, defined by a value called pH, uh, which ranges from 0 to 14. Uh, so we consider that between the values of 0 and 6, the liquid is uh, considered as uh, acidic and between uh, 7 to 14 is considered as basic. 7 is actually the neutral zone. Did I just say 0 to 6 is the acidic solution? No, it's, a, it's in fact from 0 to 7. In almost all of the reef tanks, the pH value is greater than 7, so it's mostly alkaline. The second subject that I want to speak about is the carbon. Uh, carbon is one of the most primary uh, compound of all life forms uh, on Earth. To simplify things, there are two uh, kinds of carbon, that is uh, carbon, uh, organic carbon and uh, the inorganic carbon. In this video, I'm not going to speak about the organic carbon, uh, but let's uh, get uh, into the details about the inorganic carbon. Did I forget to say you that I'm not a professional chemist, uh, so the subjects which I'm speaking about are, uh, in this video, uh, actually I learned those during my school days and I had to touch upon and uh, go through uh, a bit of reading. Uh, and research a bit uh, before doing this video. Coming back to the inorganic carbon, uh, I think the subject, at least for me, uh, is very fascinating. To simplify things, uh, let's uh, consider that all of our reef tanks have uh, three different forms of inorganic carbon. Uh, the first one is the carbonic acid, the bicarbonates, and the carbonates. As the name suggests, the carbonic acid is actually acidic in nature with a pH value of around 4.18. And don't worry about uh, the values I'm throwing upon in this video. Uh, you don't need to know all this and memorize to have a great Brooklyn uh, reef tank. The bicarbonates have a pH of around 8.4, so it's basic or alkaline in nature. So if you can imagine mixing the carbonic acid and the bicarbonate, uh, you can have uh, a solution of different pH values depending upon the proportion of uh, these two solutions. For example, imagine that you have a solution with 20 parts uh, of bicarbonates uh, compared to one part of carbonic acid, you will have a pH of around 7.4. The human blood actually has a pH of around 7.4, so the proportions of bicarbonates compared to the carbonic acid is around uh, 20 to 1. So if the proportions of the carbonic acid and uh, the bicarbonates changes in the blood, uh, it either leads to alkalosis or acidosis. I'm sorry, I got carried away a bit. Uh, coming back to our inorganic carbon forms, the third inorganic carbon is uh, the carbonates and the pH of uh, carbonates is around 
and one thing to note is that these three forms of inorganic carbon is interchangeable and the proportions of uh, the three different species in the solution defines the pH of the solution and it's not the other way around. You might now be wondering why in our reef tanks the pH always varies uh, which would imply that there is a change in the proportion of inorganic carbon. There are two possible ways to change the proportions of inorganic carbon in a reef tank. The first uh, method is by addition of carbonic acid into uh, the water solution and the second is by consumption of the carbonates by living organisms like uh, uh, your corals and coralline algae uh, and even the snails. Carbonic acid is actually the uh, aqueous form of carbon dioxide and there are many ways carbonic, uh, the content of carbonic acid can creep up uh, in a reef tank uh, like for example by the respiration of living organisms like fishes uh, can increase the carbonic acid uh, in water. You might have already heard a few reefers speak about uh, the carbon dioxide content uh, in, uh, in the environment where the reef tank is kept and the solution of uh, uh, running a pipeline from uh, the skimmer to outside of the building to get fresh air. This is actually to avoid uh, the increase of carbonic acid uh, in our tanks. I was actually surprised when I realized that the CO2 present in the room where the reef tank is kept can enter into the water column of the reef tank. I came across uh, a post on Reef to Reef uh, which was I guess posted a few years back where one of the professors from a school or, or college, I don't remember well, uh, did a correlative studies between the CO2 present in the tank and the pH values. Uh, which he measured in the reef tank and I thought it was really interesting and I'll, I'll, I'll try to uh, share the link of this post uh, in the description below. So as you can see from these explanations that uh, the proportions of inorganic carbon species in the water has some impact on the pH values uh, of the water. And another uh, parameter which we regularly come across in the reefing hobby is the alkalinity. Uh, and it is one of the most complex uh, concepts to uh, get a grasp on. There are way many uh, definitions of alkalinity uh, in the scientific community and what I want to uh, speak about in this video is the concept of uh, donors and acceptors. So let's just consider uh, that acids are donors and uh, alkaline solutions are uh, acceptors so when there are more acceptors than donors the solution is considered to have a high alkalinity the acids usually have a few photons to give away and the alkaline or the basic solutions usually have some space to uh, get some photons so these are acceptors so alkalinity in a water solution is defined as the capacity to hold the ph value at a higher level which is similar to a buffering system. Bicarbonates, carbonates and hydroxides are some of the contributors to the alkalinity. So in other words, uh, if you want to simplify things, a higher alkalinity in a reef tank means uh, that you have a greater resistance to the decrease in the pH. It's quite hard to understand these concepts just by theory. Uh, so let's move on and make a few experiments to demonstrate these ideas. For this experiment, I'm using uh, RODI water as a control sample, a simple pH probe, and I'm using vinegar as an acid. 100 ml of uh, testing sample and soda ash, uh, this is uh, sodium carbonate. I'll be using the hobby grade Red Sea uh, alkalinity test uh, kit for measuring the alkalinity in the sample. I'll then add the sodium carbonate into the sample and mix it. And 
as the alkalinity of uh, sodium carbonate is very high, uh, the result what I got was uh, out of range of the Red Sea uh, alkalinity test kit. And as the alkalinity is very high in our sample, uh, this should mean that it should resist any change uh, in the pH values when an acid is added. So the, so the first test is going to be on the RODI water. Uh, let's first measure the pH with before adding any acid to it. And it's around 6.8. And on the RODI water, if I add a few drops of vinegar, uh, the pH reduces drastically. In my case, uh, on the RODI water, uh, with 5 drops of vinegar, the pH reduced from 6.8 to 5.1. And now for the sample uh, of 100 milliliters where I added sodium carbonate, the initial pH was around 10.5. And then I added a few drops of vinegar uh, onto the sample. And the pH dropped from 10.5 to around 10.3. And as you can see, a higher alkalinity resists a change in the pH of the solution when an acid is added to it. I really hope this video helped you better understand the relationship between the alkalinity and the pH. Uh, in the next uh, few videos, I'll be showing you uh, the different methods uh, to maintain a good uh, alkalinity and pH values in our reef tanks. So, see you. Bye-bye.